cranial nerves. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Except the first two cranial nerves, the other cranial nerves arise from the brain stem. The first two cranial nerves are considered as extensions of the brain. They are the olfactory nerve and the optic nerve. Since the other cranial nerves, uh, the, that is the third to the twelfth cranial nerves, since they arise from the brain stem, their cell bodies lie in the brain stem. And these cell bodies are called nuclei. So cranial nerve nuclei are the cell bodies of cranial nerves. Since there are motor cranial nerves and sensory cranial nerves and mixed cranial nerves, there will be a mixture of different types of nuclei. There are motor nuclei, there are sensory nuclei, uh, and some of the cranial nerves will have both motor and sensory nuclei in the brain stem. If you remember the, uh, the ascending and descending nerve tracks, uh, you must be remembering that when it comes to the, uh, the, the motor pathways, there is an upper motor neuron coming down like that and synapsing with the lower motor neuron, which is the neuron that goes and supplies a muscle. Now, this lower motor neuron is the one that forms motor nerve fibers in a cranial nerve or for that matter in a spinal nerve. Now when it comes to cranial nerves therefore the motor cranial nerve nuclei are these lower motor neuron cell bodies. This is called lower motor neuron and this is called upper motor neuron and the upper motor neuron lies inside the central nervous system. So these are the uh, ones that forms the cranial nerves. So this is what I mean here, the motor uh, nuclei uh, will be formed by the lower motor neuron cell bodies of the cranial nerve. Similarly, uh, if you remember uh, the, the ascending pathways or the sensory pathways, uh, you will remember that there are three, uh, usually there are three uh, neurons in the ascending pathways of cranial nerves. If I uh, draw the spinal cord here, like this, uh, so the, the first order neuron is the one that starts from the, the receptors, sensory receptors and which has its cell body outside the, uh, the central nervous system in what is called dorsal root ganglia. And then there is a second order neuron which crosses uh, to the opposite side and it ascends and then there is a third order neuron uh, in the thalamus that goes to the, uh, the sensory cortex or the post central gyrus of the brain. So this is first order neuron, this is second order neuron and this is third order neuron. Now the cell bodies of the first order neuron they lie in the dorsal root ganglion, uh, when it comes to the, uh, the, the spinal cord, they are in the dorsal root ganglion, uh, when it comes to the spinal cord and then these will form the spinal nerves, sensory um, uh, fibers of spinal nerves. When it comes to the, uh, the, the brain and the cranial nerves, these uh, first order neuron cell bodies, they lie outside the central nervous system, outside the brain therefore. And these second order neuron cell bodies will lie inside the brain. So coming back to the previous slide, so this is what I have mentioned here. The first, uh, the first cell body, cell bodies of the first order neurons of sensory cells uh, will lie outside the central nervous system in a ganglion. Now for instance, if you take a cranial nerve like trigeminal nerve, it has what is called trigeminal ganglion, which contains sensory nerve cell bodies, first order neuron cell sensory 
nerve cell bodies uh, outside the brain and uh, the the second order neuron cell bodies are the ones that form the sensory nuclei in the brain stem therefore second order neuron cell bodies are the ones that will form the uh, the, the sensory uh, nerve nuclei in the brain stem uh, remember this point clearly otherwise you will get uh, mixed up with this idea so then when you study the cranial nerves these are the aspects that you need to uh, study you need to know the, uh, the the position of the nucleus in the brain stem uh, now whether you know you in the brain stem uh, you know the brain stem has uh, several parts it has uh, midbrain uh, with the superior and inferior colliculi superior colliculi and inferior colliculi then uh, so if this is midbrain then you have the pons then uh, you have the uh, the medulla so you have the the fourth ventricle here now you should know the position of the, the cranial nerve nuclei whether it's at the superior colliculus level or inferior colliculus level or whether it's at the pons or whether it's at the uh, medulla and when when it is in the medulla whether it's uh, in relation to the fourth ventricle which we call open medulla or whether it's um, below the, uh, the the opening of the fourth ventricle which is called the closed medulla or lower medulla so this uh, this idea you have to have and further you know you you can uh, you can have an idea about whether it's close to the center or away from the center depending on the type of sensory or motor uh, nerves it can be in uh, whether it can be close to the center or away from the uh, center and uh, depending on the cranial nerves it can be either superior collicular level inferior colliculus colliculus level um, at the pons level or medulla levels so this, this you will learn when you learn um, the individual cranial nerves then uh, you you should also know the the point at which these cranial nerves emerge from the brain stem now different cranial nerves emerge at different points from the brain stem um, now uh, this is how you see the cranial nerves inside the brain uh, now if you take uh, say again if i draw pons here uh, and uh, if if this is the the, the medulla some cranial nerves and if this is the brain stem some cranial nerves like the third cranial nerve and the fourth cranial nerve they take origin from the uh, the midbrain then uh, cranial nerves like trigeminal nerve take origin from the uh, they emerge from the um, pons area of the brain stem then uh, abducens nerve facial nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve they emerge between the uh, the pons and the medulla uh, and there are you know this uh, ninth tenth and twelfth cranial nerves they emerge from the uh, the medulla at different places you will learn the details when you learn different cranial nerves then you should know the intracranial course of these cranial nerves intracranial course of these cranial nerves intracranial course means uh, the the travel how it travels between the the point at which it emerges from the brain stem and the point at which it leaves the cranial cavity now they leave the cranial cavity through these uh, uh, foramina in the uh, base of the skull uh, now now between the the emerging point and the point at which it uh, exits the cranial cavity there is a course that you need to know uh, because it's clinically important sometimes then as i said before the the points at which they leave the cranial cavity uh, basically these are the, uh, the, the the foramina in the skull base there there is a set of foramina uh, different cranial nerves come out through these uh, foramina you should know the uh, which cranial nerve arises through emerge exits through which um, foramen then uh, certain cranial nerves have uh, a, a very long uh, extracranial course like the vagus nerve starts from the uh, it actually uh, exits the cranial cavity through the jugular foramen and it travels all the way down to the abdomen to supply the, uh, the the gut then you should know the distribution of cranial nerves distribution means the structure supplied by the cranial nerve 
So uh, it could be a muscle um, if it is a uh, if it is a voluntary nerve, or it could be a, uh, a gland if it is an involuntary nerve like a parasympathetic nerve. Before you continue any further, it is important to understand the meaning of certain terms. These terms somatic, branchial and visceral is frequently used when we talk about cranial nerves. Certain cranial nerves have somatic nerve fibers in them. Certain other cranial nerves will have branchial motor fibers in them. And some cranial nerves are mixed cranial nerves. They will have a combination of somatic and visceral or branchial and visceral motor fibers. Uh, if you uh, look at this diagram which is here uh, which shows the embryological development of our bodies it shows uh, a series of uh, segmental structures like this which are called somites now going back to lower animals if you if you recall uh, uh, an animal like uh, earthworm uh, its body is in segments even an adult earthworm, it has its body in segments. Now our bodies, we don't see segments outside unless uh, we look at the vertebral column or the, the thoracic rib cage, where we actually see the segmental nature. Uh, but outside when you look, uh, you usually don't see the segmental nature. But during our development, as shown in this diagram, uh, these, these segments appear in relation to the um, uh, the area where the vertebral column and the spinal cord is going to uh, develop. So if uh, you remember your embryological development of the neural tube and the vertebral column, um, you know that uh, when the neural tube is formed like this from the neuroectoderm uh, at the posterior side of the body, uh, in relation to the, uh, the developing neural tube, uh, there is a mesoderm called paraxial mesoderm paraxial mesoderm and this paraxial mesoderm thickens and forms a series of somites like this series of somites like this and each somite each somite as you can see here divides into three parts a dermatome myotome and a sclerotome this sclerotome is the one that gives rise to the vertebral vertebra. Vertebra. And, uh, and, and inside, if you take a vertebra, if you take a vertebra, if this is a vertebra, now and, and if this is the body and if the, the canal is here and the spinal cord is inside that, uh, now, at each level of uh, the, the, the vertebral bodies, uh, there is a spinal segment in the spinal cord inside. There is a spinal segment. From that spinal nerve um, segment, a spinal nerve comes out. A spinal nerve comes out. Now, that spinal nerve, uh, the, the one that comes out, actually supplies the other two parts uh, that develop from the um, the somite. What are the other two parts? The myotome and the dermatome. So the, the myotome of that somite um, from which the sclerotome developed and in, in relation to which the spinal cord segment was lying inside, uh, the myotome is the one that forms the muscle supplied by that uh, spinal cord segment in relation to that um, somite. And the dermatome is the one that uh, forms the skin. Uh, in relation to that uh, spinal cord segment. So if you if you remember your dermatomal and myotomal map, uh, you know that uh, if this area is C4, that means uh, it is uh, it has developed from the uh, the the fourth C4 somite, and the, the, the C4 spinal nerve, um, which is coming from the C4 spinal segment will uh, actually uh, get the sensory nerves from that area. 
because this is a dermatomal map so it's sensory nerves and similarly uh, if you if you remember your biceps muscle here you get the biceps and the, the segments are c5 and c6 uh, supplying the biceps muscle so that means the biceps muscle has developed from um, c5 and uh, c6 uh, somites the myotome of c5 and c6 somites that is the reason why it is supplied by c4 and c6 spinal nerves motor spinal nerves in this case so this is the point that i wanted to raise here then uh, now when it comes to the the whole body except the the head head region uh, this rule applies but when it comes to the head area uh, other than the somites there are new structures that are developing in us which are called branchial arches which are called branchial arches so these branchial arches that are developing in the neck region uh, gives rise to structures in the head and neck region now each branchial arch will have an endoderm and an ectoderm and a mesoderm inside so this mesoderm can give rise to uh, cartilage bone um, muscle etc uh, and and these muscles and, and cartilages and bones are supplied by uh, just like the spinal nerves of a somite supplying the dermatome and myotome of that somite uh, these uh, bones and cartilages and muscles developing from these branchial arches are also supplied by uh, an arch nerve a nerve that is dedicated for the structures developing from that arch therefore when it comes to the head and neck area uh, it's not only somatic somatic means nerves uh, or the, the nerves supplying the structures developed from somites as i said before so when it comes to the cranial nerves uh, other than somatic there is a branchial component also because there are structures in the head and neck region supplied by the developed from the branchial arches um, uh, then uh, then when it comes to uh, the internal organs uh, and blood vessels uh, the nerves supplying these are called visceral nerves um, whether it's uh, motor or whether it's sensory uh, you you call them visceral visceral sensory and visceral motor so this is an example you know later you will uh, uh, you will get this lecture if you have not got this lecture already now this diagram from uh, langman embryology book uh, clearly shows you uh, uh, the different nerves belonging to differ different branchial arches now the first branchial arch gives rise to uh, the you can see the structures here uh, you have this premaxilla maxilla zygomatic bone uh, part of the temporal bone then you know is uh, malleus uh, and incus in the middle here they are all formed by the the mesoderm of the first branchial arch uh, and other than this you can add muscles of of mastication which includes uh, uh, masseter temporalis muscle um, mylohyoid muscle anterior belly of digastric um, medial and lateral pterygoid muscles all, all these muscles therefore are supplied by the um, uh, mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve which is the first arch nerve uh, then uh, it is the second arch nerve second arch nerve is the facial nerve all the structures developing from the second arch like the stapes uh, the styloid process uh, stylohyoid ligament and parts of the uh, hyoid bone they develop from the, uh, the mesoderm of the second branchial arch therefore the second arch nerve the facial nerve supplies them and other than that uh, other than these uh, these structures you can add muscles of facial expression here of facial expression so they are all supplied by the uh, the second arch nerve which is the facial nerve uh, like that glossopharyngeal nerve is the, uh, the third arch nerve uh, and the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve is the fourth arch nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve is the sixth arch nerve now the glossopharyngeal supplies the, the, the pharyngeal muscles and the superior laryngeal and the recurrent laryngeal branches of the vagus nerve supplies the um, 
muscles of the larynx. Now this slide shows you few hints about how the cranial nerves are arranged, how the different nerve fibers are arranged in a cranial nerve. Now for example, I have shown you uh, a nerve called cranial nerve A and you can see in this um, diagram, this uh, nerve fibers shown in black color are supplying a muscle. Now if this muscle is a skeletal muscle, if it is a skeletal muscle, these nerve fibers are either somatic motor nerve fibers, if the muscle has taken origin from somites as I said before, somites, then it is a somatic motor fiber and if the muscle has taken origin from branchial arches or pharyngeal arches, branchial arch mesoderm or pharyngeal arch mesoderm, then, uh, then it is not somatic, then it is branchial. branchial motor fiber. So then this is one point that you need to remember. So if this is a skeletal muscle, the nerve fibers uh, that are shown in black color in this nerve A uh, are uh, either uh, somatic or branchial based on uh, from which uh, um, component it uh, originated from. If it is from somatic uh, somites, it is somatic motor. Uh, then if it is from branchial arch mesoderm, then it is branchial motor um, fibers. And this nucleus, therefore, uh, which is the nucleus of the cranial nerve, uh, and that can be either uh, a somatic motor nucleus or so branchial motor nucleus, I think that is clear for you all. And this is the lower motor neuron that we were talking about uh, in the previous slides which forms the, the actual cranial nerve we see and the upper motor neuron would be uh, starting from the um, uh, motor cortex and coming down uh, crossing from the other side. So that is in the central nervous system. Okay, then uh, now this one uh, shows a blue, another type of nerve fibers in this same uh, nerve A. Uh, and this blue colored nerve fibers, we have shown in color blue, it, it shows that it supplies a gland. So glands are always you know, involuntary. So if a gland is supplied by nerve fibers like that, uh, obviously it's a visceral, visceral motor nerve fiber. So in the head and neck region, visceral nerve fiber, visceral motor nerve fibers are actually parasympathetic. Visceral motor ones are parasympathetic in the head and neck region uh, unless it has come from the neck area, sympathetic. Uh, now why, why I say that it is parasympathetic if it is from the head and neck region is that uh, the general rule is that the, the parasympathetic uh, nerve fibers have a cranio sacral outflow and the sympathetic nerves have a thoracolumbar thoraco, lumbar outflow. This is basic stuff that you must have learned. So therefore, if you get uh, uh, autonomic nerve fibers or visceral uh, motor fibers, autonomic motor fibers from the, uh, the head area, the brain, uh, it is parasympathetic. Uh, so then these fibers that are shown in blue color supplying this gland uh, uh, should be visceral motor or to specifically mention it, it's parasympathetic nerve fibers. And this nucleus or the collection of cell bodies in the brain stem, therefore, uh, will form the parasympathetic nucleus of the nerve A. Nucleus. Parasympathetic nucleus of nerve A. So it has a somatic motor or branchial motor nucleus. Uh, and it has a parasympathetic nucleus. Same nerve, nerve A, can
can carry now in this case it is sensory fibers coming from the skin so if there are sensory fibers coming from the skin obviously it's somatic sensory so these are somatic sensory nerve fibers coming from the skin which are also part of the nerve way it is also possible that these nerve fibers are not coming from the skin but it comes from an internal organ or from a blood vessel in that case um, it is uh, not somatic sensory but visceral sensory visceral means internal organs so then you get this anyways whether it's visceral or somatic you get this uh, the first order neuron um, fibers going into the central nervous system but the general rule we know that uh, this cell body cannot be the first order neuron cell body because the first order neuron cell body should lie outside the central nervous system uh, when it com when comes to the, sp the spinal nerve it's the dorsal root ganglion but since this is a cranial nerve this will form the sensory ganglion of the cranial nerve cranial nerve ganglion it will form the cranial nerve ganglion and this this nucleus uh, is formed by the second order neuron cell bodies uh, which is the sensory nucleus of this uh, nerve a now according to this example you can see it is possible that one cranial nerve uh, has got uh, somatic motor or branchial motor fibers parasympathetic fibers uh, somatic sensory or visceral sensory fibers sometimes uh, all these components can be there or some of these components can be there then there is another uh, part to it now i have drawn a different nerve here nerve b you can see that these sensory fibers whether it's uh, somatic sensory or visceral sensory doesn't matter these sensory fibers that belong to nerve a goes with nerve b uh, to some distance you can see these nerve fibers go through nerve b and then join nerve a now this is called hitchhiking of uh, nerve fibers so what it means is that it hitchhikes with one nerve and later it joins uh, its original nerve where it uh, belongs when the neural tube develops in the embryo uh, we know that uh, if you go by the sulcus limiton in the neural tube if you draw a line here behind the sulcus limitans uh, the, the, the neural tube cell bodies in the neural tube uh, gives rise to uh, the sensory component of the uh, the nerves and uh, the part of the neural tube in front of the sulcus limitans gives rise to motor nerve fibers cell bodies and motor nerve fibers so this is the general rule and the and further uh, if you go by the sensory side the posterior side very close to the sulcus limitans it is the visceral sensory and further behind it is the somatic sensory that is how the cell bodies are nerve cell bodies are arranged in the neural tube then then similarly on the motor side the anterior side close to the, uh, the 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 plane passing through the sulcus limitans it is uh, visceral motor fibers in front and further in front it is somatic motor here which forms anterior horn uh, cells if you remember it so this is the general uh, arrangement uh, when it comes to the spinal cord now if you draw the spinal cord like this the same rule applies therefore you have sensory behind now if this is thoracic uh, segment thoracic cord, lumbar segments you have this lateral horns and um, even the lateral horn there is part behind and part in front so the somatic uh, sensory ones uh, are on the posterior side with their cell bodies um, first cell body outside then the second cell body inside it's not 100% some second order neuron cell bodies will not lie there they will lie at higher level mm, then uh, the somatic motor fibers will have their cell bodies in the anterior horns as the anterior horn Uh, cells 
then when it comes to visceral uh, the, the visceral sensory ones will have the cell bodies behind the uh, the, the, the line that we drew uh, at the lateral horn and the uh, visceral motor ones will be in front of it so here since this is a thoracic and lumbar area when we say visceral motor it is sympathetic just like the parasympathetic was there in the cranial nerves here in the spinal nerves uh, in relation to the spinal cord you you get the sympathetic even though we call it visceral motor as a general term it's sympathetic when it comes to the spinal cord uh, thoracic and lumbar areas in the sacral area again it is parasympathetic i think you know this uh, already then uh, when the brain stem is formed uh, in relation to the the pons and the medulla area where there are a lot of cranial nerves what happens is the neural tube that is developing breaks here posteriorly to form the fourth ventricle now this is the fourth ventricle you can see it it has it has broken in the middle posteriorly and opened up opened up um, like this then uh, because of this opening up now this is this opening up if you represent it uh, in a, in a in a in a cross section so this is the midline here this is the midline and you can see the sulcus limitans is represented here sulcus limitans is here so then this is actually you call this area the flow of the fourth ventricle which is actually uh, contributed by the uh, the pons here up to this area like its pons then the rest of it is uh, the, uh, the open medulla um, then the closed medulla lies behind it it's closed anyway so then this is the flow of the fourth ventricle so there are many cranial nerve nuclei lying in the flow of the fourth ventricle now because of this opening up because of this opening up here uh, now the arrangement of nuclei is different now initially in the spinal cord it was from anterior to posterior in that direction but now the anterior one has here become medial so it's medial here because this is the central line and this is lateral so the the same nuclei are now arranged from medial to lateral try to understand this clearly so what happens is that the somatic motor ones now this is somatic motor nuclei they lie very close to the the midline here okay they lie very close to the midline somatic motor ones then uh, visceral motor ones as in this case which are these will lie medial to the sulcus limitans area then uh, visceral sensory ones lie just lateral to it then Uh, the somatic uh, sensory ones which are these will lie further laterally so this is the basic arrangement if you just go by this uh, this uh, preliminary arrangement these are the, uh, the nuclei you get spread from medial to lateral in the flow of the fourth ventricle uh, and even in the other places the arrangement could be very much uh, similar even here and here but it's obvious in this area where it's opened up now uh, when it comes to the head and neck area we said there is a, there are structures developing from branchial arch mesoderm therefore definitely uh, other than somatic motor you have to have a branchial motor component also so that will lie somewhere between the somatic motor and visceral motor uh, as shown here so that is branchial motor then the other issue is when it comes to the the, the head and neck area Uh, you get special sensations like uh, vision smell taste hearing these are special sensations therefore this uh, the somatic sensory unlike in the spinal cord uh, has to be divided into two like uh, special uh, somatic sensory and general somatic sensory general somatic sensory means pain touch vibration pressure such sensations Uh, and special sensory as i said um, the special sensations in the um, head area but you need to remember when we say special sensations here uh, if you take a smell which is taken through the olfactory nerve uh, you know already you know that the olfactory nerve does not come into the brain stem i said that in the first slide therefore you will not have 
uh, olfaction or smell here represented by this nucleus uh, oh, and when it comes to the vision vision goes in the second cranial nerve which is the optic nerve uh, and that also doesn't come into the brain stem therefore uh, vision is also not represented in this uh, special somatic sensory nucleus when it comes to taste uh, it is from the tongue mucosa and it is a special visceral sensation uh, it's a special visceral sensation it's not a somatic sensation uh, therefore it uh, will go into the visceral sensory uh, nucleus with the general visceral general sensations so ultimately you are left with only one sensation which is hearing hearing uh, as the special sensation going into this so that's the uh, detailed thing but just you know remember it here itself then you will not get uh, mixed up so then you know uh, to give you an idea about the different types of uh, sensations you can have uh, from the head area it could be uh, visceral sen sensations or somatic sensations visceral sensory or somatic sensory and the visceral sensory can be general visceral sensory uh, examples pain temperature touch vibration um, pressure those things then special visceral sensations it is uh, taste coming from the tongue somatic sensations can be general somatic sensations just like the, the visceral uh, general visceral sensations pain temperature touch vibration position sense and all that then uh, the special somatic sensory is uh, hearing and vision and smell will not come into the uh, brain stem area you know that now we will take a look at the functional components of different cranial nerves you can see here the arrangement that we agreed upon now this is the midline and this is the, the medial uh, end therefore and this is the lateral end uh, and you can see the sulcus limitans here uh, and you see the arrangement of uh, cranial nerve nuclei from somatic motor to uh, special uh, somatic sensory uh, nerve uh, sensations so then uh, if i take one by one if you say if you take somatic motor component these are the cranial nerves that i have listed down that carry or that has got somatic motor nuclei uh, in the brain stem therefore you know these nerves will carry somatic motor uh, functional component in them now what are the nerves is the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve fourth one which is the trochlear nerve sixth cranial nerve which is the abducent or you can call it abducens nerve and the hypoglossal nerve or the twelfth cranial nerve so these are the cranial nerves that has got somatic motor nuclei in the brain stem you can see third one here fourth one here then the sixth one here and the twelfth one here so this is how they are, have, they are arranged and you can see they lie very close to the midline according to the general plan. Okay. Then you go to the second component which is the branchial motor component. Now these are the nerves that uh, carry branchial motor component. Therefore they have got branchial motor nuclei in the brain stem. Fifth cranial nerve or the trigeminal nerve seventh or the facial glossopharyngeal or ninth tenth or vagus eleventh or cranial accessory so these are the nerves that has got branchial motor components so that means these nerves carry uh, motor fibers to um, structures developed from branchial arch uh, arches so you can see you can see now there is one nucleus here one two and only three nuclei when it comes to branchial motor so this belongs to the fifth cranial nerve and this this belongs to the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve and this third nucleus this is for all three nerves here glossopharyngeal vagus and cranial accessory so they share one branchial motor nucleus here in the medulla which is this one so remember that point I will erase these 
is 32 cm. Then the visceral motor component uh, or the parasympathetic component, these are the nerves that carry visceral motor or parasympathetic component. Its third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve, facial, uh, glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. These are the nerves that carry visceral motor and you can see in black color there is one visceral motor nucleus that belongs to the third cranial nerve uh, and there is another visceral motor nucleus that belongs to the um, uh, facial nerve and there is another one be below that which belongs to the glossopharyngeal nerve and there is a fairly large one that belongs to the vagus nerve, uh, the, the parasympathetic nuclei. You know the vagus nerve is a very large nerve supplying many structures with parasympathetic fibers so it has got a fairly long uh, nucleus in the medulla there. Then you go to the next sensory modality, uh, the, the visceral sensory. Uh, in the previous uh, slide we said the visceral sensory nucleus uh, contains both uh, general visceral and special visceral. Uh, therefore all the cranial nerves that carry uh, the general visceral sensations and a taste or special visceral sensations or taste will actually uh, have one nucleus which is this long nucleus. It is called nucleus of tractus solitarius. I will show you the name later. And these are the nerves that carry uh, the visceral sensations, uh, facial nerve, uh, glossopharyngeal nerve and the uh, vagus nerve. Actually all these uh, nerves can carry um, the, the taste sensations uh, and uh, the general visceral sensations can go through uh, these through these two nerves. We will go, go into the details later. Then when it comes to general uh, somatic sensations, uh, it is a very long nucleus starting from the midbrain, passing through the pons uh, and uh, ending up, uh, passing through the medulla also and ending up in the upper cervical spinal cord. It is a very long nucleus which is called the trigeminal nucleus which actually has got three parts. You can see one part here, one part here, one part there. Three parts, they have different names. We will go into the details later. And it belongs to one nerve which is the uh, trigeminal nerve or the fifth cranial nerve uh, and uh, and the nerves that are shown in 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 fainted color here uh, seventh ninth and tenth cranial nerves uh, they are the nerves actually uh, through which uh, which these uh, some of these uh, general somatic sensory nerve fibers that belong to the fifth cranial nerve may hitchhike with these nerves that are shown below not that these nerve fibers originally belong to those nerves, they just hitchhike with those nerves that I have shown below. Originally, uh, the fibers will belong to the, uh, the, the trigeminal uh, nerve. Then the last one, special somatic sensations uh, here, which is actually uh, hearing, uh, it is actually going through one cranial nerve, which is the vestibulo cochlear nerve, uh, and there is a clear one nucleus here um, for that purpose. Then uh, there is another thing that you can learn from this uh, nice diagram. Uh, if you see here certain cranial nerves in these boxes, vertical boxes, you can see certain cranial nerves appearing more than once. Now if you take this one, third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve is here and it is here as well. So that means that the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve has a somatic motor component as well as a parasympathetic component or visceral motor component. Similarly, uh, there is another thing that you can learn from here. If you take uh, the trochlear nerve, abducens nerve and the hypoglossal nerve, they only appear in this column or cage. So that means uh, all these three nerves has got only a somatic motor component. They are, they are, they are purely somatic motor nerves. So that is another thing that you can see here. Then if you take a nerve like a facial nerve for instance, it appears here, appears here and it appears here. So that means that it has got branchial motor component in them, in that it has got parasympathetic as well as visceral sensory. In this case it is actually taste going through the facial nerve. So if you look at the other nerves, so you can see glossopharyngeal also just like facial Vegas also like facial it has all these three 
components there. And um, so this can go on like that. You can actually look at it then. Uh, you can summarize it. Now this is the other nerve that is important. Uh, the trigeminal nerve, it has a branchial motor component and a general somatic sensory component for the sensation from the skin. Uh, so you, you, if, you, uh, if you study this diagram carefully, you can learn many things about the cranial nerves uh, through this diagram. Now we will take functional components one by one and see which cranial nerves carry this functional component and which cranial nerves has got nuclei related to this functional component in the brain stem. First we will take somatic motor component. Now the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve has got a somatic motor nucleus at the level of the superior colliculus of the midbrain here. Then uh, the trochlear nerve or the fourth cranial nerve has got a somatic motor nucleus at the inferior colliculus level of the midbrain. Then uh, the sixth cranial nerve or the ab abducent nerve has got a somatic motor nucleus uh, at the pons close to this area called facial colliculus. Then the twelfth cranial nerve or the hypoglossal nerve has a somatic motor nucleus uh, in the medulla, which is this one. So these are the cranial nerves, therefore, that has got a somatic motor component which we summarized in the previous slide. Now we are expanding it. Then there is few more to it. Now these, uh, these somatic motor fibers carried in the oculomotor nerve, trochlear nerve and the abducent nerve, all these three, they supply the extraocular muscles, muscles of the orbit, extraocular muscles. Now, now, what is the meaning of uh, uh, somatic motor fibers supplying extraocular muscles? Now, the idea is this. Now, even though we say that uh, structures in the head and neck region are uh, uh, they develop from uh, branchial arch mesoderm, yes, many structures like muscles of mastication um, and you know bones and cartilages there, muscles of facial expression, they develop from branchial arch mesoderm. But this uh, muscles of the orbit or the extraocular muscles, uh, they develop from uh, the, uh, the myotomes, they develop from the somite in the, uh, the occipital area uh, which are called occipital uh, somites, occipital somites and these occipital somites from the, the, the occipital area that is the back of the neck, they migrate into the orbit to form these uh, extraocular muscles. Therefore, uh, these cranial nerves, third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves will have somatic motor nerves supplying them, not branchial motor. Similarly, the muscles of the tongue also develop from uh, this uh, myotome, therefore uh, they, uh, the, the tongue muscles are supplied by the somatic motor component going through the twelfth cranial nerve. Then the branchial motor component, now this is in relation to the structures that develop from the branchial arches. Now uh, trigeminal nerve, the, the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve actually uh, is the one that carries uh, the branchial motor component to the muscles of mastication. So all the muscles that are used in chewing, mastication are supplied uh, by the, the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve through this branchial motor component which is located in the pons area. Here it is the pons area of the, uh, the brain stem. Then uh, the facial nerve has a branchial motor nucleus which you can see here which is very close to the, uh, it, it is actually at the facial colliculus uh, with the abducent uh, nucleus. Uh, the details will be learned later and this branchial motor nucleus supplies muscles of facial expression, muscles of facial expression. Then uh, the last one, uh, the, the nucleus ambiguous, there is one single nucleus 
uh, which is the branchial motor nucleus for 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves. All three cranial nerves which take which uh, will take branchial motor from what is called nucleus ambiguous. This is how you write it, nucleus ambiguous. Um, and they will supply the, the pharyngeal muscles and laryngeal uh, muscles. Then the visceral motor component, uh, you can easily uh, write within Becker's para sympathetic uh, fibers here. Now then uh, there is uh, uh, there is one nucleus, the first nucleus uh, at the highest level, which is called the Edinger Westphal nucleus. This nucleus uh, is also called accessory oculomotor nucleus because that belongs to the third cranial nerve. Uh, so that is uh, that is the one that goes to the third cranial nerve and controls the, uh, the, the some of the pupillary muscles and the uh, and the curvature of the lens through the ciliary uh, muscle. Then uh, there is uh, there is salivary nuclei. There are two types of salivary nuclei. Uh, the upper one is called superior salivary nucleus, and the lower one is called inferior salivary nucleus. And the superior salivary nucleus is actually uh, related to the uh, the seventh cranial nerve or the facial nerve. Inferior salivary nucleus is the nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve and uh, the name itself suggests that they supply the salivary glands. Glands with parasympathetic uh, secretomotor fibers. Then uh, the vagus nerve has a fairly large nucleus which is called the, uh, the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve. It's an important nucleus because uh, the fibers arising from that supplies the cardiac muscles and the smooth muscles of the alimentary tract and the smooth muscles of the respiratory tract. So it's an important nucleus for that matter. Then the visceral sensory, uh, as we mentioned before, it consists of uh, general and special visceral sensory. Um, both general and visceral, special visceral sensory goes into one single nucleus which is called the nucleus of tractor solitarius, a long nucleus here. Um, and it receives taste from the tongue through uh, the facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. If you draw the tongue like this and if you divide the tongue into an anterior two-thirds and posterior one-third, from the anterior two-third of the tongue, taste fibers are carried through the facial nerve uh, into the nucleus of tractus solitarius. And from the posterior one-third of the tongue, taste fibers are carried through the, uh, the glossopharyngeal nerve uh, to the nucleus of tractus solitarius. And further, uh, general sensory inputs from the heart, lung and other visceral organs uh, reach the nucleus of tractus solitarius uh, through the vagus nerve. All general visceral sensations from these organs will go to the tractus solitarius uh, through the uh, vagus nerve. And uh, general sensory from the tongue uh, goes into the trigeminal nucleus ultimately you will see that later. Then the general somatic sensations, uh, now uh, this, this the general somatic sensations uh, go into the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve which is a very long nucleus as we said before extending from the, uh, the, the midbrain to the uh, cervical spinal cord. Uh, it is a very long one. Uh, it has got three parts, the mesencephalic part, main sensory nucleus and the spinal nucleus. Now the mesencephalic nucleus receives proprioception Ception, and it is located in the midbrain area. And the main sensory nucleus receives touch sensations, it is mainly fine touch uh, or discriminative touch and it is located in the pons area and the spinal nucleus receives pain and temperature, pain and temperature uh, and it is located, it starts from the, the, the pons, goes through the medulla into the cervical spinal cord. Then the special somatic sensory, uh, it is hearing where the, uh, the vestibular cochlear nerve, so it is one single nucleus and uh, going through one nerve. 
So ultimately, uh, if you uh, gather this information, you could draw this diagram that we went through previously. So you can actually develop this with that information. Uh, if you present the information in, a, in, in this way, it would be more interesting. That's why I started with that. So I'm not going to um, summarize this again. You can replay the video and uh, see this, how I summarize with uh, all the functional components. So be thorough with that uh, to understand the rest of the lectures.